Good afternoon. Hi there, this is Nancy Mason. I'm the director of the Muskogee Nation Youth Services Program and just wanted to welcome everyone to our webinar today. Um, I just wanna go over a few things as we get started and then we'll begin the presentation. Um, if you're joining us via Zoom, um, you can communicate with us in two fashions. There is a chat bu button and a Q&A so you can ask questions and either one of those options will be responding to both. If you are joining us on Facebook Live, if you will post comments, if you have questions or comments, um, we will also be monitoring that and we'll have an opportunity at the end of the presentation um, to get your answers for you. Again, we're glad to have you joining us for this presentation today. I want to tell you a little bit about our program. Um, we're the Muskogee Nation Youth Services and our goal is to empower Muskogee youth by connecting them to community, culture, and resources. We do that through five very different uh, program goals. Um, the first is fostering advocacy. We work with the Youth Council for the nation. Um, we also to try to provide other leadership opportunities and getting other young people engaged in um, having their voice heard. We um, work on providing resources. This webinar today is one of those. It's a, it's a resource for you all, um, as well as we have a really great um, list of resources on our website. And we also have a resource book that's available for free on download from our website, or you can also contact us and we can send you hard copies. Um, another program goal that we have is promoting civic duty. So this is really around getting young people to be engaged uh, within voting, uh, being engaged within their communities and knowing what's going on and how things that happen in their community affect them and throughout the nation. Uh, another goal that we have is encouraging wellness, and that's probably where the majority of our programming um, exists. We try to do a lot of like life skills, cultural activities, um, just things that help young people to be well. We focus on suicide prevention a lot, and we partner with several different programs with, throughout the nation um, to help us to do that. And then our last one is creating support. Um, through that program, we have our brand new Muskogee Mentors, um, which is a pilot that we've been working on um, in the Wetumpka area and um, just doing some mentoring, hopefully with some additional youth as we continue to grow. And then just providing that ongoing support for our young people that we work with, as well as for other programs that serve youth. So right now, I want to go ahead and turn um, the program over to our intern. We have a college work experience intern through the nation. Her name is Gina Powell, and we've kind of given her an assignment to work on this Chagosin Yegebida project. And so I'm going to let her tell you about the project um, and some of the opportunities that we have available for you all. Thanks. Well, as Nancy said, my name is Gina Powell, and I am a student for the college work experience through the Muskogee Creek Nation. Um, today, I wanna to talk about our program, Chikolza Nugabida. Um, today, our presentation today will focus on providing resources, encouraging wellness, and creating support. Chikolza Nugabida means little steps. This project is designed to provide you with the tools to help your children grow. The project is primarily for youth and young adults between the ages of 16 and 24. However, our webinars are open to all parents and guardians. For the parents in our target range, we offer assistance for planning for your future, connecting you to resources, providing additional education through webinars and workshops, and also providing parental support like diapers and wipes and other things that you may need for the baby. Um, we have our healthy life plan that helps you promote positive uh, planning for the future of you and your child or children. And uh, we also have our new text line, Little Steps, and this will provide you with weekly alerts that contain valuable information such as tips, links, and other support services. Um, at the end of our presentation, I'd like to talk to you more about that pro program and if you'd like to be involved with it. Um, right now, I'd just like to turn our time over to Brandy to present our presentation today. Brandy Trigasser is a registered nurse and she serves the public health of the Muskogee Creek Nation Department of Health. So I'd like to just present Brandy. Hello, um, thank you for joining us this afternoon and thank you to Muskogee Youth for um, inviting me to participate in this project. Um, 
today we'll talk about smoking during pregnancy and beyond. Um, I know that a lot of times we, um, once we're pregnant, uh, life takes a little bit different perspective. And so I just want you to know how um, the effects of smoking has while you're pregnant and afterwards with babies. So here we go. Maybe. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you wouldn't light a cigarette, put it in your baby's mouth and encourage your little one to puff away. Of course not. We have these beautiful little uh, blessings that uh, there's nothing on this earth we wouldn't do any for them, you know. So um, I just wanted to um, share with you uh, this next screen because a lot of times when we're pregnant, smoking, we don't think about exactly what happens on the inside. We just... Um, you know, we, uh, it's very hard to quit and we know that it's a, a habit that's very hard to drop. But if you can just think about what it does for babies, sometimes that can change your perspective enough where you want to seek cessation services. So the next slide I'm going to show you, there was a, a, a commercial back in the 1980s, very, very controversial. Um, in fact, they uh, took it off the air, but I'm going to show you, I don't have the actual video, but the, the uh, picture was a fetus smoking a cigarette and it showed um, the baby putting a cigarette in his mouth, a little puff, puff of smoke, and they thought that was pretty controversial. But I really wanted to show this because this is exactly what you need to think about um, is happening whenever you're pregnant and you pick up a cigarette. Because everything you take into your body while you're pregnant, baby gets first. And what's left over you get, whether it's food, whether it's uh, nutrients, whether it's uh, drugs and alcohol, whatever there is, baby's getting first, you know, it passes that placental barrier. So just think of um, this right here whenever you're struggling and um, needing to, to quit. Okay, so of course there are risks of smoking during pregnancy. Specifically for baby, um, there's a higher incidence of miscarriages, stillbirth, premature birth, low birth weight, uh, SIDS, and then later in life, these uh, kids are more likely to have asthma or other respiratory problems that uh, can follow them through life. And this can all be prevented because every little thing we can do to um, keep our babies healthy and happy, um, we're definitely willing to do. So first I wanna go over myths about smoking and pregnancy. And I, I've been a nurse 20 years, work with moms and babies for a, a vast majority of that. And um, every one of these myths I've actually heard someone else um, uh, speak about, they've asked me about. So uh, just in case you or someone you know um, may have some of these, may um, help you a little bit to talk about it. So. First excuse or myth, I'll be more stressed out if I quit, and that's not good for the baby. We know smoking, um, to quit smoking is not easy, can be stressful, but just remember that smoking a cigarette is much more dangerous than uh, being stressed out. Uh, once you can quit, um, those cravings go away. Cravings cause stress because you're you're worried about um, when you can have your next cigarette, and whenever you um can stop that, then you definitely will feel less stress. It's a process, doesn't happen immediately, but it definitely um, is good in the long run. So here's another one. My baby's okay. She's in a little bubble, smoke can't get in, and, and that's true. Um, but uh, whenever you smoke and babies um, in the uterus, it's like putting um, them in a smoke filled room for 15 minutes you know, or a car with all the doors closed, windows up for 15 minutes. That's a long time and we would never do that um, intentionally. Because um, you have to remember babies share a bloodstream with their mother. Um, and so whenever you smoke a cigarette, all of those toxins go through the mom's bloodstream. That's why we get that, that feeling of euphoria or um, uh, that you feel whenever you smoke, baby gets that too. And there's over 4,000 harmful chemicals in a cigarette. And whenever, um, they get these toxins, their little hearts are struggling to uh, get oxygen. And when their not, hearts aren't getting oxygen, the rest of their body isn't either. And they're just in a, a constant uh, state of growing. And so we don't want to inter interrupt that at all. Okay, we talked about low birth weight. And I've heard uh, someone say, if my baby's too small, it'll make birth so much easier. 
well, you know, the birth process might be a little bit easier, but we have to remember that small babies are weak babies. Small babies um, stay in the hospital a lot longer. They have respiratory problems. They have vision problems sometimes. They really, really have a rough go at the very beginning of that. So um, they can definitely have some serious complications. So we definitely don't um, want to believe that um, if they're smaller, it'll be easier. Okay, if I quit, I'll get fat and nobody wants that. Of course not, because um, sometimes whenever you quit smoking, you go to eating because you're just kind of uh, replacing one habit with another. But while you're pregnant, that's the perfect time to eat healthy snacks. Um, instead of smoking a cigarette, take a walk because that's good for you, good for your endorphins um, to release when you exercise, keeps you in good shape. And when you have baby, if you were to breastfeed, breastfeeding really helps you to shed the pounds and uh, boost your metabolism so that you get a double um, good there. Okay, my mom smoked with me and I'm okay. So I really don't see a problem. Uh, many of us have parents that smoke, um, but remember it affects everybody differently. You know, uh, just because you didn't have any problems or born early doesn't mean that your baby won't either because that's not a, gen a genetic trait that's passed down. Um, smoking is responsible for 40% of infant deaths in the United States. That's astounding. That's almost half of infant deaths were caused by smoking. And that's definitely something that we can prevent. Um, I'm already six months pregnant. It's too late to quit. I've definitely have heard this one. It's never too late. It's never too late to quit. Even in the very last few weeks of pregnancy, if you can um, stop smoking and replace that with a healthy habit, um, your baby has that much uh, better of a chance to come out with um, no problems, less problems uh, than if you were to smoke the whole way. So um, if you think that you know, I've, I've already gone this far, what's a few more weeks or months, um, change, your, change your way of thinking because it's definitely never too late. I'll cut down instead of quitting. Well, that's definitely a good first step. You know, quitting cold turkey is very difficult um, and you could definitely uh, cut down, but remember that's still very, very, very harmful for your baby, but um, definitely a good first step. Smoking is me time. I can't give it up. We all need me time. Me time is good for us. Um, it's good for our mental health. And we know while we're pregnant and soon after we have a lot of hormones, things strike us different. Um, but think of it in the way of um, use the money that you would have used to buy cigarettes and save it up to treat yourself for a massage or a pedicure or um, a piece of clothing that you really want. Um, save for something big, vacation, something like that. Because if you were to step back and see how much money you were, to, that you were spending on cigarettes, you probably would be surprised. Um, find a new reward instead of a cigarette, you know, um, replace that with something else, a healthy snack, like we said earlier, or a walk, something that makes you feel good. Maybe it's watching a TV show uh, by yourself while someone uh, takes care of baby, something like that. There's options. Okay, this is definitely one we hear a lot. E-cigarettes are better, I'll just smoke those. The thing about um, e-cigarettes, and that can be a whole nother topic, is they aren't tested for safety. You know, um, cigarettes, we have a long history of um, research and being able to evaluate people that have smoked for a very long time. With e-cigarettes, they're essentially pretty new. Um, they're not brand new by any means, but the safety is just unknown. And what we do know about it is it has a whole nother set of its own problems. And um, they're not proven to be safe, even if they advertise that they are. And these devices usually still have uh, nicotine and other toxic chemicals, even when they say that it doesn't, um, they do. And so I uh, don't think because you're not smoking an actual cigarette with tobacco in it that um, that's a better option because it's still, for you especially, not very good at all. And it still has traces of those things. Okay, so here is a 3D ultrasound. Um, the top three pictures um, is one baby, and then the bottom three is another baby. And I wanted to show you this. It was a, a video that I watched, and I thought it was very interesting because the baby on the top, um, mama smokes. Mom smokes pack a day. Um, and I believe these are approximately six or seven months along. And if you'll notice, baby's very guarded. Um, the babies moved around a lot, like they were more anxious. 
um, very excitable and always um, guarding their face. That's, and that's not a relaxed um, pose if you were just kind of sitting there chilling out. That baby at the bottom, mom doesn't smoke, never has smoked, and he's just kind of hanging out there waiting for, for life to happen here. They're very calm, um, relaxed, show signs of relaxation, but that baby on the top is definitely um, going through, through something. Okay, about one in four pregnant Native American women during pregnancy are smokers. So um, we don't like to be part of that statistic. We want to make that statistic lower. If we're gonna be um, at the top at something, we definitely don't want it to be this, but it's very, very common, but it doesn't have to be. So why is it so dangerous? Um, you know, tobacco smoke contains um, more than 7,000 chemicals, one place I read 4,000, but hundreds of those chemicals are toxic in 70, around 70 cause cancer. Um, these are things that we are knowingly put in our body if we smoke, um, and we're definitely taking a risk for us and for baby. So just to kind of break it down, um, here's some of the cancer causing chemicals. Um, we have chemicals used to make pipes, gasoline, some things that are radioactive, uh, used to embalm bodies, things that, these are things that are in just a regular cigarette, nerf and fancy. Also, there's uh, poison gases, because whenever we light a cigarette, it's a chemical reaction. Um, we have gases in there that are used in chemical weapons, paint thinners, lighter fluid, car exhaust. That's definitely not something we would knowingly put in our body on purpose, much less all of that together. Toxic metals, even, you may not think about that but um, arsenic that's used in pesticides, uh, chromium to make steel, lead, which we know lead poisoning is a very bad thing. Um, and then uh, the toxic metal to make batteries, cadmium. I never um, realized um, until I started doing this line of work that there were so many things in a cigarette. It's not just tobacco when it's a commercially grown product. Okay, so smoking cessation. We know that uh, to quit smoking is not an easy process. It's um, a very difficult thing, and I'd commend anybody that can successfully um, stop smoking for any duration. Um, the 1-800-QUIT-NOW is Oklahoma Helpline that assists with smoking cessation, and they have a program specifically for pregnant women. So if you call and let them know that you're pregnant, um, they can assist. They give you counselors, some life coaches, um, resources, they send you things in the mail, and then after baby comes, they can help you with like the nicotine replacement, um, things like patches, gum, and such like that. So that's a great program, but you've got to ask for it. Okay, so this beautiful baby is born. We are just in love. We are in awe. Um, just can't hardly believe what a miracle it is. We uh, say we, you may have stopped smoking while you were pregnant. It's really easy to pick it back up because you're thinking, okay, I'm not pregnant. It's just me. And for some reason, we don't care for ourselves as much as we do for our little babies or our family. But it's very important. Let me show you why. I love those pictures. They're so sweet. Okay. So why would you pick up smoking again? Well, quitting sometimes temporary. Um, stressed out. We've got this new baby. No one's sleeping. Uh, if you have other kiddos, life is stressful. You think about job and work, uh, recovering. Um, moms may feel like they're not quite themselves until they get into those routines that they had before. Um, social, circle, so, social circles, you know, you're in places where you smoke, like a casino or um, places that you may have gone before. And also if you have a partner who smokes. So it's very important that um, dads understand um, Quitting by yourself is hard enough when you have to sit there and watch someone or smell someone, that, that's near impossible. So I would suggest supporting um, your, your moms because they're really working hard anyway. So um, I like my little, who says smoking kills? I'm 42 and doing fine. Yeah, it does definitely ages you. Okay, how can we quit and stay quit? So uh, one major thing is tell people you're going to quit, you know, that makes you accountable. You know, um, if you uh, say it out loud, then you have family and friends that can help support you. That's a definitely something that you will need. Um, 
create smoke-free zones in your house and car. Make sure there's not a lighter in there. There's not a pack of cigarettes. There's not any butt cans, anything like that. Take all of that away so that temptation to reach for it is just simply not there. Um, you may see if nicotine replacement therapy is right for you. 1-800-QUIT-NOW can help with that. Your primary care provider can help with that um, and see which options because there are definitely several different things that you can try. And of course, calling that quit line, uh, speak with the trained counselor, let them know what you've got going on in life because they'll call and check on you and they will, they offer some of the best support that you will get anywhere, definitely. And whenever someone quits smoking, family um, is usually very proud, very proud. And so we, we like those proud moments. Okay, so what does it do to baby? Once babies are born and we've smoked during our pregnancy, they go through nicotine withdrawal. And you may uh, not realize that's an actual thing, but um, when babies are born and that constant um, stream of nicotine is gone, they go through withdrawal symptoms, sometimes similar to um, babies that were born to moms that were doing heroin or crack, because all of it is just not there. Um, even just casual smoking, smoking here and there occasionally will harm a fetus. So it doesn't matter if you do it once or 500 times, it's still not good. Um, these babies that are born to smoking moms are tend to be more jittery, more excitable. They cry a lot more. Um, they're stiff and rigid, which is a sign of anxiety in a baby. And um, they're just a lot more difficult to console. So think about that when you take this baby home, um, we want those babies that are going to sleep and they're happy and they feel good. Um, but going through any kind of withdrawal is difficult on the human body, much less these little, little precious babies that just came into the world. And they also show stress in their central nervous system with, you know, being rigid or excitable, their gastrointestinal, which is their, their, um, their tummy and their poop. Um, it could mess that up. Um, and even their vision, you know, the eyes are the very last thing to develop in a baby. So, uh, that's why when they're born early, they have eye problems sometimes, um, but the nicotine can definitely affect that eye development while they're um, in the womb. Things you may not think about. Okay, so secondhand smoke. We all have heard of secondhand smoke. We all know that it's dangerous. Um, causes lots of health problems, infants and kids. It can cause um, asthma, respiratory infections, ear infections, SIDS, uh, ear infections apparently twice. Um, and so that's not good. Even if um, you're smoking in the car, baby's in the backseat and your window's down, they're still getting secondhand smoke. Even if you're smoking in your house, but baby's in its room with the door closed, they're still getting exposed to some kind of secondhand smoke. And that's just not good. But have you ever th heard of thirdhand smoke? This is something that we don't hear a lot about or talk about, but what in the world is that? So third-hand smoke is the nicotine residue that remains on surfaces. So when you walk into um, somebody's house and you smell smoke or um, you go to a hotel room and you can smell smoke, that's your third-hand smoke. That's the, the, um, the tar and the nicotine that sticks to the walls and the paint and your curtains, carpets, clothes, um, furniture, floors, um, even your acoustic tiles like in an office building. And the reason I say that is, um, you know, if you're a smoker and you go outside to smoke, you shut the door, go smoke, come in, wash your hands. The second you pick up your baby, if you haven't changed your clothes completely, you're exposing that baby to third hand smoke. You know that you can smell a smoker um, when they come in, even if they're smoking out in the, you know, in the wide open. So that's something to definitely um, take in consideration. And there's a reason that infants and kiddos are at a greater risk. Um, they breathe faster naturally, 40 times faster than adults. Our respiratory rates are usually very slow, between 12, 16, above 18 is normal. Um, but babies are, you know, they're breathing 40 to 50 breaths a minute. So they're taking more of that in, that third hand smoke, that second hand smoke. So their exposure is much more than an adult would be. Um, they also put everything in their mouth. Um, everything that they touch. So if they're touching something that has that third hand smoke, they are transferring it right to their mouths. Um, we hold them close to us whenever, if you're breastfeeding or if you're just holding the baby or anything you're doing, if you're wearing clothes that you have smoked in, you're exposing that baby to that third hand smoke. And it's just not something that we um, hear a lot about. Um, and also they have greater absorption through the skin. Their skin is much more sensitive. It hasn't had any time to um, get thicker and denser. 
um, so they can definitely um, have a uh, more of an exposure. Okay, so um, I'm circling back around to the 1-800 quit now because they actually, especially for you that have partners that smoke, um, they have a program specific for Native Americans as well. Um, so uh, we know that commercial tobacco is not a Native tradition. Um, and uh, they have special services to help with this. They have a, they have a whole other set of money um, and things that they can offer uh, people that are Native American and smoke. So if you're Native and you're pregnant and you're smoking, um, this is just another reason to reach out and get this resource. So um, definitely they do a lot of outreach and, and such like that, which is just great. Okay, so here's my references. Um, I want to do a quick little plug for my program here at the end. Um, like I said, I'm a public health nurse for Muscogee Creek Nation. I uh, manage a program uh, that is specifically for uh, mother babies. We do home visits um, to qualify for the program. Um, you must be native, pregnant, and have a history of some kind of substance use, tobacco included. If you're a former smoker, current smoker, that would qualify you for the program. I do monthly visits while you're pregnant. We do education, case management, make sure you're getting to your appointments and um, see if there's any resources that you need. Once baby's born, I'll continue to come every month, every other month until um, baby is two. I'll bring diapers and wipes and other kinds of uh, goodies for baby while still making sure, you know, doing well checks in the home, um, making sure that baby's hitting those developmental milestones, um, Assessing mom for postpartum depression once babies are here, uh, we do have a lot to offer. So I've put my phone number and my um, email address there at the bottom. Um, it's a voluntary program, doesn't have to have a referral from one of the clinics. You don't even have to be a patient with us here at the health system. Um, but I wanted to share that with you um, at the very end here. Okay. Right. Thank you, Brandy. That was very powerful and very informative information on that. And thank you for those quit now. It's good to know that they have programs specific to pregnant women and Native Americans. You know, that's, I didn't know that. So that's, I like that. But um, when our webinar, oh, like I said, thank you, Brandy. Thank you again for that information. So when our webinar closes, uh, you will see a link to begin a survey to give us some feedback. We value your input so that we can continue to improve our services. Yes, uh, before I go on, I forgot to ask, is there any questions um, for Brandy or about this smoking program or about her program in, in um, or any questions about that? Sorry. If you have any questions, feel free to call Brandy. Um, I think that maybe she can put her link on the, I mean, her phone number in the chat line and maybe you can get a hold of her that way. Or you can call Youth Services to get some information and we can send it on to Brandy and we can uh, get you linked up that way with her. So um, as I said before, we value your input. So if you could at the end of the webinar to uh, see that link and begin that survey to give us some uh, feedback. So we can continue to improve our services to help you all. And um, if you are pregnant or parenting and are between the ages of 16 and 24, and you would like to be involved with Jikosikikabida, the Little Steps program, please contact our office and you can speak to me, Gina Powell, or you can speak to Nancy Mason. And um, I'd also like to remind all of you watching today that um, you, if you would like to receive parenting information to text, LTL steps to 81010. And if you sign up by if you sign up for the text line by the end of Friday, you'll be entered in you would be entered in a drawing to uh, win some awesome prizes for you or your baby. And um, we also have some future webinars coming up. The WIC program will be providing our next presentation on Wednesday, August 13th. And the TANA program will be on August 27th. So don't forget to register for those. Both presentations will be held at 3 p.m. And you can register by going to our website and looking at our events pages. Mado. 
Hey, Gina, real quick, I just want to make sure that folks know that they need to put that at symbol when they text that in. So it's at okay. LL step okay. to 81010. You can see that there on the screen. Um, if you are listening right now and you're one of those young people who's pregnant or parenting and you're ages 16 to 24, we would love to hear from you so that we can tell you more about what our program can offer to you just as in support. Um, definitely, also, we want to make sure that you complete the evaluation at the end. That will give you credit. So if you've already said, hey, yeah, we want to be a part of that program, you're going to get some baby bucks for attending today so that you can put those towards other items that your baby is going to need. Um, so make sure that you do the survey that'll get you credit for watching today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you our website information there that Gina was talking about. That's how you can reach us um, through our email phone number. There's our website. Um, if you go to the events page on our website, the upcoming webinars are listed there. They're actually the same link that you registered with today. So that makes it a little bit easier, but you can go back to our calendar if you forget that. And then we're on social media with the hashtag, or no, sorry, with the handle of at Muskogee Youth. Um, so feel free to catch us there. We try to advertise a lot of um, information and resources that are going on. But like Gina said, please sign up for that text alert because we'd like to give out some prizes for the people who sign up before the end of the day tomorrow, Friday the 31st. Thanks again for everyone for attending. Brandy, thank you for being our presenters. A great job. I learned a lot of information from you today, things that I just didn't even know being an old mom that I am. So appreciate you for sharing that with us. Um, we hope to have you back again soon and we hope that we'll see all the rest of you as viewers in the future. Have a great day.